Hi, this is our fifth video in our series on relative estimation. As usual, if you missed out on any of the previous videos, you'll find links to them in the description below. So we have covered a lot of ground. We've spoken about what story points are, what velocity is, and how we can use those values to create a release plan in JIRA. Now what we're going to do is have a look at what we can use in JIRA to track and manage our release plan to determine whether our team is going to deliver on time. Now, if you stick around to the end, I'm going to give you some tips on what you can do if your team is not going to deliver on time. Okay, so let's get to it. Let's have a look at what we can use in JIRA to track and manage our release. In the previous video, I gave this example. I had A through to O, it was a total of 127 points, and it came out to be a forecast of about 13 to 17 weeks based on a velocity of 19.5. So let's imagine my team starts this release. They start delivering these product backlog items. How can we track how they're progressing? Well, in JIRA, we have two reports, the version report, and the release burn down report. Now, before I take you through those two reports, there is a bit of bad news. Unfortunately, they are only available with company managed projects. So if you're using a team managed project, unfortunately, you will need to export the data and perhaps create a similar type of graph or chart manually. But at least by taking a look at these reports, as I show you in a moment, you'll see what sort of information to track and also how you can use that information to see if your team is going to deliver on time. So let's begin by taking a look at the version report. Okay, so firstly, how do we find the version report? Well, we click on reports in the left panel there and you'll see that it's listed just lower uh, below. And this is what you'll see. So the first thing is to make sure that you've picked the right release and you'll see it listed here in the top left corner there. I've only got one release so it shows as a label but if you have multiple releases you will see a, a drop down. You can see the dates of the release uh, presented just below it and then this is the report. So you can see here we've got story points on the left and time at the bottom. So it's showing you story points completed over time. But it also provides a few other details. So firstly, you can see the total number of story points that are in the release. And that's presented as this light gray here. So you can actually see on my report here that it started off as 400 points. And the reason for that is remember my entire product backlog in the example that I gave was 400 points, but I dropped it down to 127 to cover off just A through to O. So that's why there's a bit of a change in the number of story points in my release here. What else can we see? We can see the completed story points, of course, that's provided and shown as blue on the chart. You can see a little bit of blue down here because my team has only just started uh, their first sprint and getting through the work. I'll give you another example in a minute where it's a little bit more visible. And what else can we see? We can see non-working days here. So of course, weekends, those are presented again as gray on the chart here. We can see a predicted completion date. This is the, the blue line here. It will show you when your team is potentially going to finish. So you can see here, if I hover over that dot there, it's predicting the completion date as the 19th of September. Now what it does here is it shows you not just a predicted completion date, but it will also show you a optimistic date and a pessimistic date. Now, how did it calculate that? All it did was just take 10% off your velocity for the pessimistic date and, and add 10% to your velocity for the optimistic date. So what it's trying to tell you here is your scheduled release or what you've communicated to your stakeholders should ideally be somewhere within that range. And you know, if it's not, then you probably wanna have a closer look at what's going on. So another useful piece 
of information that this provides is the actual release date that you've put on your release. So you can see that here as the dotted line here, I've got a release date of the 4th of September. So in this case, you know, I'd probably wanna look at what's going on here and figure out if I need to uh, talk to my product owner or if I'm the product owner, if I need to rejig my product backlog and take some items out and then re-communicate what's going to be delivered to my stakeholders. It's just a bit of a, a warning sign there to keep an eye on. Now, the last thing that we can see on here is the percent of unestimated issues. So let me give you another example because it's not evident on this one. So here's another example, and this is a good one. You can see that there are a lot of unestimated issues there uh, with the red line that's presented. And also uh, you can see the completed work as the blue there. So a tip here, the percentage of unestimated issues, you really wanna look out for that. It's a very common problem with a lot of scrum teams that I, I work with is they have items in the product backlog that are unestimated. Now, if that's the case, of course, these reports are not going to reflect the right information. There is work there that needs to be done that hasn't been estimated and isn't being factored in. So keep an eye on that. And again, if you've got unestimated issues, you wanna get your team on top of those, get some story points in for them. So then you'll find that these reports provide you uh, with a more reliable indication of when the work's going to get done by. Okay, so what else can we see here? Uh, you can see those dates listed just below. Again, the predicted date, optimistic date, and pessimistic date. And then lastly, it provides you with a status report here. So at the bottom, we can see the completed issues here. I see my team has done their first sprint. They completed 19.5 points. And below are a list of all the incomplete issues. So. It gives you a bit of an idea again of what's done, what's left to go, and the number of story points that remains. Let's now go have a look at the release burndown. Okay, so just like the version report, you will find the release burndown under reports, and it's just towards the bottom there. So click on release burndown, all right, here it is. So you could see that just like the version report, we've got the release at the top there. Make sure you've selected the right one. And then this is what the burn down looks like. So we've got story points on the left and sprints across the bottom. So each bar here is a sprint and it's telling you a little bit of detail about the remaining points uh, and how much is left to go. So here we can see the original at the start of the version is 127 points. But then in sprint one, we actually got through 19.5 points. So we can see that through this green that we see on the bar. Uh, in the second sprint here, you can see my team got through 21.5. And in sprint three here, we got through 33 points. Okay, so we can gradually see the team getting through the work through those blue uh, bars here. We can also see work that was added to the product backlog. Now that's visible as the darker blue at the bottom here. So you can see in sprint three, there was an additional 15 points added to the product backlog. Now this is very useful because what you can do is you can present this burn down to stakeholders and let's say you're off track, let's say things are going to take longer, you can show them why. You can say, hey, it's because we've been adding these new product backlog items, maybe it's been because of stakeholder feedback or changes within the organization or within the industry or with your product. Uh, so we can justify to stakeholders why things might be moving, okay, and not on track. And then we can work with them and decide, okay, what are we going to do with this information? Now, if you'd like more a more detailed breakdown, you can click on the bar here, okay, and you see the, the details there. Now, if you have at least three sprints, you will get an indication of how long there is to go. So here it's saying that there is three sprints remaining. Now, how did it calculate it? Well, like I showed in previous videos, what it does is it takes the average of the last three sprints. So here, my average is 25 
points per sprint and it shows that we've got 68 points remaining. Okay, so it's basically gone 68 divided by 25. We have three sprints to go. So it gives you an indication of how much time remains. Again, you can work with stakeholders and make sure that they are happy with how things are going. Just a couple of tips here to make sure you can interpret what's going on correctly. Now, the blue here, those are the number of points of all the product backlog items that were originally assigned to the release. Now, it's important to rem remember that because what happens is if you change the story points on any of those original product backlog items, it will change this number and then it will change the burn down. Okay, so if I was to, for example, go back to any of those product backlog items and let's say change a, a 40 pointer to a 20 pointer, then this number would go down by 20. Keep that in mind. If your team updates the estimates on the original product backlog items, it will change this graph. The other thing to remember is when your team breaks down product backlog items. If they take bigger product backlog items, let's say I've got a 20 pointer in there and it's originally assigned to the race, but then my team breaks it into four smaller, let's say five pointers, and they add those four, five pointers to the product backlog, then those new product backlog items will be represented as additional work. So just keep that in mind uh, because you might be trying to work out what's going on here with your burn down. Okay, lastly, let's just have a look at what's below. We can see that there is uh, a line sprints at the base of the chart. So for example, if I click that, it would just show it with the base there all in line. And underneath, we can see a bit of detail about what work was completed and when it was completed. So I can see my sprints here, okay, all the product backlog items, how many points were completed in that sprint. And if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, I can also see all the issues that still remain. Okay, so the release burn down is a really great way to see what's going on with your release. Uh, how much work is getting done per sprint and how much work is getting added per sprint and an indication of when the release will be done by. Now let's imagine the team is not going to be done by the time you have communicated to stakeholders. What can you do? How can you get it back on track? Let me give you some tips. Okay, so imagine your team's not going to deliver on time and you need to get this project back on track. What can you do? Well, there are two levers that you can play with. The first is scope and the second is velocity. Now, as an agile coach, I always suggest looking to scope first. So remember, by virtue of a prioritized product backlog, the items at the bottom are less valuable than the items at the top. So it might be really simple. You might just need to shift the lower priority product backlog items to the next release. That might be the easiest way to reduce the remaining work within the release to get it back on track. The other thing you can do is look for the larger product backlog items. Those items that are 20 points, 40 points, or 100 points, and say, okay, is there an easier way to deliver those requirements? Is there an easier implementation? Okay, so lean on scope first. Now, if you can't adjust scope, then you will need to increase the team's velocity. Now, how can you increase the team's velocity? Well, there are two very common go-tos that I need to warn you on. The first is getting the team to work overtime, and the second is adding people to the team. Now, getting the team to work overtime, it's certainly an option, but be careful with it. If you get a team to work overtime too often, they will get burnt out. When they're burnt out, they'll make more mistakes, and sometimes they can lose motivation. So, it's certainly an option, but use it as a last resort, certainly not as a first one. And the second option that I need to warn you on is adding people to the team. Now, I know it might sound like a good idea if you can do it, but what will happen is when you add a person to the team, it actually doesn't speed them up at first. In fact, it can very much slow them down. And why? Well, because that new person needs to be brought up to speed, they need to be shown the ropes, and usually we take the most experienced person on the team to do that, to help them to, again, bring them up to speed. So be careful with introducing 
new people to the team. If it's late in your project, you might actually find your project goes even later. So instead of getting the team to work over time and adding more people to the team, what else can you do? Here are a few tips. Firstly, if you're working back in the office, co-locating your product owner can make a huge difference. When your product owner is sitting there with the team, they're going to answer questions uh, very, very quickly. Sometimes they will even answer questions before they become questions by overhearing team chatter and they get involved in discussions. Now, if you're not co-located in the office, again, you're not back in the office, maybe you're all working remotely well, just making your product owner more easily contactable is going to potentially increase their velocity. Secondly, be careful with emergencies. If you have stakeholders going to your team, disrupting them saying, hey, this work needs to be done by tomorrow and it's unrelated to your release. Uh, well, we need to be careful about that. You want to direct those emergencies from stakeholders to the product owner and the product owner should decide whether it actually is an emergency or not and maybe it can just be pushed to a subsequent sprint or maybe they could find another team to deal with it so it doesn't affect your team okay so be careful with emergencies raised by stakeholders thirdly uplift your team skills if they have better skills they're obviously going to perform better also consider cross-skilling within the team, getting people to learn what the other team members do, uh, that can also increase a team's velocity. Next tip here is to provide the right tools for the job. So obviously a tool like Jira, uh, if you're working remotely, this could be Zoom, uh, Microsoft Teams, so they can communicate effectively, and also tools like the microphone that your, team, that your team members are using or their webcam, make sure it's clear and we, the team can communicate effectively. My last tip here is to make sure your product backlog is appropriately refined. So as I've covered in other videos, make sure those upcoming product backlog items are sufficiently detailed, well understood and appropriately sized. Apart from getting your project back on track, a final tip here is to make sure that you are regularly communicating with your stakeholders. Keeping them in the loop so they are made aware of what's going on as early as possible. In Scrum, we do this by facilitating the Scrum Sprint Review. But we have had many teams tell us that they struggle with getting stakeholders to attend their sprint review. Typically, this is because either they are really busy or they are perhaps located in other time zones and it just becomes really inconvenient. So if you have the same problem, go check out Sprint Report for Stakeholders. It's a Jira app that we created that's available on the Atlassian Marketplace. And what it can do for you is help you create a report that you can share with stakeholders offline. So share what went on, what was achieved, any impediments or issues that your team is experiencing. That's a great way to keep them in the loop when they cannot attend your sprint review. So if you'd like to give it a go, I've placed a link in the description below. So there you have it. That's how you can use Jira to track and manage your release and also some tips if your team is not going to deliver on time. So I hope you enjoyed our series on relative estimation. If you have any questions about relative estimation, you can put them in the comments below. And lastly, if you found this video or our series helpful, please give us a like, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you think others are going to find this helpful, please share it with them. In any case, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you at the next one.